Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. Zimbabwe's billion dollar gold mining industry is crucial for the country's struggling economy. But traditionally, more than half of the country's population has been excluded from taking part. But now Zimbabwean women are breaking barriers to share in the wealth, following in the steps of one extraordinary entrepreneur. Here's our story. Zimbabwe, a country blessed with striking beauty. Amazing. And vast deposits of mineral wealth. Zimbabwe has got so much gold, so much. 60-year-old Rosemary Marimo is a gold miner in Mazawe, a town in western Zimbabwe. This is easy gold. This is very, very easy gold. Rosemary's adventure began some two decades ago. With her husband, Anthony, she gambled everything by selling their farm to lease land from the government. Their plan to launch one of the most economically risky businesses of all, gold mining. We didn't know much about mining. We were learning from day to day. And we struggled. It was not easy. We started with a small, tiny machine. Beneath this country lie vast reserves of gold, gold that Zimbabweans have mined for centuries. By some estimates, there's enough gold to make every person in the country a millionaire. Despite this, the cruel reality is that Zimbabwe still ranks among the poorest nations in the world its people impoverished, especially its women. Poverty hit women much more harder in our countries than men. Alan Nudehu is head of the United Nations team in Zimbabwe. Many countries have actually put a lot more emphasis on working with women first as a way for dealing with poverty and as a way also dealing with the economic growth of the country. But without the government's support, women in Zimbabwe can't profit from the nation's lucrative gold industry without startup money. This is our first machine. Rosemary discovered that breaking into the business world had its own share of challenges. Men are used to walking into a bank, talking with a bank manager and so forth. For women, that's a fairly new area. Dr. Olivia Muchena is Minister of Women's Affairs in Zimbabwe. When you say women in mining, people look like, are you sure you know what you are talking about? So we are just taking women back to what they used to do before, but in a more sophisticated way. Women like Rosemary. Even though she sold her farm, she needed even more capital to make the business profitable. So she applied for a loan in her husband's name, since in many countries around the world, including Zimbabwe, property and assets belong to men. With money in hand, Rosemary and Anthony made a go of it. They cleared the land, purchased some heavy equipment, and lived in nothing more than a makeshift tent. It wasn't easy. We made a lot of mistakes, and my husband worked so hard. The couple fell on hard times too. Anthony's labor alone wasn't enough to expand their mining operation. When their sons, Chawatama and Tawanda, finished high school, they helped out. But Rosemary wanted much more for her children. She managed to save enough money to send Tawanda to university to study engineering. I told my children I will never leave this place unless everyone has got a degree. I'm a big dreamer, <laughs> that's, that's my problem. Then the unexpected happened. My husband came sick. He passed away 14 years ago, but I, I carried on. 
when he passed away, uh, things were not too easy for me. Rosemary was left with an outstanding bank debt. With no husband, six children, and a gold mine to manage, life became overwhelming for her. So many bills to, to pay, and uh, electricity is very expensive in Zimbabwe. Sometimes they come and switch off because we, we have not paid. Soon, the bank was on the phone, and with her husband gone, she lost control of the business. And the bank threatened to, to take over everything from us. That, that's the beginning. And when my son graduated, I said, come, come back home. We must work hard because we owe the bank some money. Tawanda came home. And with his engineering background, he quickly introduced more efficient equipment and advised his mother to switch to deep shaft mining since most of the surface gold had already been exploited. It was here, buried deep beneath the earth, that Rosemary uncovered a bounty of gold. In four years, she managed to pay all her bills. Rosemary survived through sheer hard work and willpower and the ingenuity of her sons. It was stories like hers that brought a change of thinking by banks. Before, women were dependent on their husbands, fathers or brothers to get into any contractual arrangement through various programs. A good number of our banks are opening windows or special facilities for women. To further help women get into business for themselves, in 2011, the government pushed for the implementation of the Indigenization and Economic Empowerment Act. Part of this legislation puts 51% of ownership of all foreign-owned companies into the hands of Zimbabweans. Another part of the same law gives women a greater stake in the nation's mineral wealth. These are gold stones. Our government was very determined to raise the standard of uh, women, the status of women. Today, Rosemary's Mining Company employs 25 workers, a fifth of them women. And she is now renovating a house and all of her children are getting an education. But as much as Rosemary is living her dream, she feels guilty because the children of her workers don't have the same opportunity. They must see what my children are doing as well. I want to see some driving their cars to see their, their mothers. Because it can't go on forever from being a worker to another worker to another worker. No, the cycle must break. The children must go to school. She can start by taking all, all the stuff. This stuff. And now the government of Zimbabwe has hired her as a consultant to assist new women miners in navigating the banking and lending system that she once struggled against. I can tell there's gold. I can tell there's gold. She, she's in such poverty, yet pains me. I'm so passionate about, about helping other women because I've been through, through a lot in my life. Come and awake, what you have been Her friend Mabel is benefiting from the new laws. Mabel just leased this plot of land from the government to begin prospecting for gold. Unlike Rosemary, she had a start-up loan and expert advice. If I go to a, someone's mine, I will tell them what you are doing is, is, not, is not the right thing. I, I'm, I'm willing to come here mm -hmm. and show you how to do it, okay. you know, because you, have, you are sitting on something very big here. She also shows them how to avoid the pitfalls she once experienced. The compressor. So compressor. It's exciting to me because I've never seen easy gold like this. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, I'm already excited. Okay, I'm already okay, excited. okay, okay, okay.
Elaine Nudehu believes that the assistance given to women like Mabel will contribute to Zimbabwe's economic potential. By empowering women, you allow this person to really care for the family. And that is actually a very smart thing to do. Rosemary is also exploring alternative ways of extracting gold, something she had overlooked for years. Cyanide is widely used here to separate gold from raw ore, a process that's dangerous for workers and hazardous for the environment. Rosemary is testing safer methods to use in her own business and to share with other miners. A woman who once worked in the shadow of men, Rosemary is now taking the lead in shaping a new team of women miners in Zimbabwe. A drastic change from when she and Anthony initially began prospecting for gold. As long as you work hard, you can make it. When my husband passed away, I stayed here. I promised him when he was sick, I said, I will not leave this place unless something good comes out of it.